Hey there, I'm Keith, and I'm currently getting sunburned in beautiful Cartagena, Colombia. I just shot a wedding in Peru, and shooting destination weddings is kind of a difficult thing. Usually when you're filming a wedding, you have giant pelican cases in your trunk where you can have every body, lens, and drone you can ever imagine having that's already in your arsenal. But when you're traveling, things are a little more difficult to pack. On this trip, I had a second shooter, and I had to take all of my stuff in one backpack. So that was pretty difficult and I also included a drone so I had to really think about the camera bodies and lenses that I was going to choose and what I'm going to get the most bang for my buck out of. There are tons of helicopters and wind and cars beeping so I'm sorry if this uh, audio is pretty crazy. This video is going to be a testament to the DJI mic if it ha can handle this wind as soon as I started filming the wind picked up, of course. So digging into the camera body and lens that I used mainly for this shoot was the a7R5 with the 50 millimeter 1.2. It's the camera that I'm filming with right now. Uh, and I didn't bring a tripod, so I had to rig my camera up on a cooler and a stand. And it is right next to a pool, so I hope it is sturdy on that stand. Um, that being said, I didn't bring a tripod at all for this shoot because I was traveling so light because we were traveling around to so many different places. Prioritizing a lightweight kit was really important. So why I chose the A7R5 was really simple. It was because of the insane resolution coming off of that sensor. The 61 megapixel images allow you to shoot really wide and crop in and post. The 50 millimeter 1.2 makes things so easy to shoot with with those four XD linear motors. I have a whole review video of the 50 millimeter 1.2 that I will link at the end of this video in the description down below. But the 50 millimeter 1.2 is an absolute workhorse and I leaned on it really hard with this wedding and the only other lens I used and it was only for brief very specific shots was the 35 millimeter 1.8. I love the 35 millimeter 1.8 because First off, the image quality coming out of this is punching way above its weight class. I also have a review video of this on my channel, which I will link in the description at the end of the video, but the compact size of this and the image quality coming out of here is absolutely insane for the price that you're getting. I know the G Master is technically the 1.4, but it is way heavier, it is way larger, but the compact size of this and only losing 1.4 to 1.8 really isn't that big of a difference when you're shooting a wedding because I rarely find myself shooting at 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.8 because you're usually getting multiple subjects in focus at once like the bride and the groom and they're never perfectly matched up next to each other so your focal plane has to be a little bit larger than I'm typically used to shooting for product photography for example. Product photography you can shoot with a razor thin depth of field and you know what you're going to get but when two people are moving independently from each other and you know on the wedding day the bride and groom are all excited and happy and hugging people you want to have a little bit wider of an aperture so more things are in focus and the bride and groom aren't saying yeah these are great but the images are a little bit blurry um, meaning that one person is in focus and the other person is too far because you were shooting too wide all that to say the only two lenses I used on the day of shooting this wedding was the 50 millimeter 1.2 and the 35 millimeter 1.8 and I didn't keep them in this bag. I actually packed a separate bag that is way smaller. It is my go-to bag for uh, out and about just uh, street photography, but it came in absolutely clutch on this wedding and it was the Peak Design 6 liter sling bag. It's got a little use on it. <laughs> but this Peak Design 6 liter sling bag is an absolute beast when it comes to packing light because it forces you to really think about your lens and body and how many batteries you're gonna take and filters. Everything that goes in this bag is something that you will absolutely use because there is no room for extra fluff. It was awesome, but it forced me to think what I really wanted to shoot because I was, was thinking 35 millimeter was my widest lens. I have to be able to step back and I have to pick locations where if it's just the bride and groom, I can step forward and get a little bit closer, but the bride and groom always has like 10 people on the left of them, 10 people on the right of them, aunts, uncles, grandparents. So I have to pick a location that I can actually step back physically because it's a prime lens and shoot everything as wide as I have to. And uh, if you're going to be shooting wider things you can you know make them form a U it doesn't quite look as good but in a pinch it works but then you have to crank your aperture up and then you know you're relying on ISO at that point so if I had it 
unlimited lenses, I would have taken my 20 millimeter 1.8. That is an awesome wide angle lens, but just for having, you know, one shot, it just didn't make sense to pack that when I had the 35 and I could just step back a little bit. I had to be more cognizant of my location scouting though. Oh my god, it's hot. When it came to my second shooter, they were shooting with my trusty a7 IV. And this camera is a beast. It's what I shot most of my photos with in prior weddings. So the sensor and the image quality coming off of this is something I'm very familiar with. When it comes from going from the a7R5 to the a7 IV, this camera, you have to shoot what you actually want the photo to look like. You don't have the luxury of really zooming in like three, four hundred percent and cropping and still be able to use it. Knowing that I wanted my second shooter to have uh, an easier life. I went with the 24 to 105. This is an absolute beast of a lens when it comes to general purpose photography. And with that F4, I really didn't have to have my second shooter have a ton of crazy bokeh in the background. They were responsible for B-roll shots, shots of the venue, uh, you know, the little details of the rings and the centerpieces and, you know, just people laughing and hugging and cheersing. So this is a great lens when it comes to just general purpose, wide angle shots, and then you can punch into 105 and really get details of the same scene. So you're getting two photos of the same scene for the price of one. When it comes to second shooters, I don't want them to have to swap lenses when it comes to getting two shots of the same scene because weddings happen so fast, you're gonna miss the scene if you're not really fast. And then if you're constantly swapping lenses, then you have to be cleaning. And you know, if you get one speck of dust, it makes post-production a nightmare. So having a zoom lens on a very capable camera body is something that I am confident giving a second shooter, even if they aren't like the most super experienced, they're still gonna get great images with this combination. So um, not saying my second shooter wasn't experienced this time, but it makes things way easier. While I was wearing my six liter uh, Peak Design sling, on my camera, I also had my Peak Design uh, camera sling. So I had, I might've looked a little ridiculous, but I had my sling bag and my camera slinged over my shoulder. And that allowed me to really have have my hands free to do anything that I needed to do, positioning people, moving things out of the way, kind of when you're shooting weddings, you have, kind of have to like create a scene, uh, move distracting things out of the background. So constantly putting your camera down and potentially having someone elbow it off a table is something that I'm really not interested in happening. So having a sling um, on top of my other sling bag probably looked ridiculous, but it was really functional and all day it made a lot of sense. Okay, the A7R5 has not overheated yet. This is going to be the test because it is 92 degrees and the camera is directly in the sun. Moving on to the next compartment of my camera bag, I have a physical battery charger and enough batteries that will get me through the entire day for me and my second shooter. The reason I have a physical battery charger is because whenever I am done with a battery, I immediately put it in here and then put it onto a big battery, jumping ahead a little bit, but uh, a giant USB-C battery so it can charge and I can have enough batteries that if me and my second shooter have cameras on all day and the wedding gets extended, we have enough battery power to actually last us the whole day. It's really frantic when you're approaching the end of the day and you have like 10% battery and you're like in the middle of family portrait shoots and you're like, well, this wedding was supposed to take three hours and it's we're going on six and a half here. So I've learned my lesson, have enough batteries. They're a little expensive, but buying, um, I buy the OEM Sony batteries. They last forever in these new cameras, but just to be sure, I always throw them on a physical battery charger so I don't have to plug my camera into USB-C and power them that way. Moving Moving on to the next compartment of my bag, I have, and I have to be very careful because I'm sitting next to a pool, my backup hard drive. This is an absolute must if you're going anywhere, um, even non-destination shooting, immediately backing up all of the files onto a laptop and an external battery and potentially keeping them on your memory cards if you have enough of them to go around is a huge benefit. I actually keep mine on a, uh, this is a WD Black external drive, but I also have a Samsung uh, SSD. So I have redundant backup of external and I also keep them on my computer and I try to back them up to Dropbox, but uh, you know, we're in Columbia right now and the connection really isn't that fast. So my laptop is actually downstairs still backing up all of those images 
packages to my Dropbox. So uh, and the, the raw files coming off the A7R5 are like 130 megs a piece. So it's going to take forever. But so for now, I just have um, them all on the SD cards. I have them on two externals and my laptop. So if something happens now, that's out of my hands. Dude, I am a way too Irish for this. Okay, you're gonna see me get progressively more and more sunburned as this video goes on. Okay, so the next thing in my camera bag are filters. Um, I use filters a lot for video, ND filters, and uh, sometimes diffusion filters. I haven't really used diffusion filters much for photos though. I shot this last wedding with a Nisi one quarter black mist filter and I was checking the photos and I liked the results that I was getting. We were in a backlit reception. It was like uh, at the end of a pier and there was just windows all around so I was getting nice backlight and the halation coming off of here wasn't distracting but it made it look almost cinematic this is uh, you know an overused word especially on YouTube but it looked cinematic so I loved the results of a little bit of mist. It also helps smooth out a little bit of imperfections. Um, if there are any, the bride this time didn't have any, but if there are any that, you know, if you have like a little pimple or something, I typically have to go out and like clone stamp them out or something like that. But uh, this actually softens a little bit of the edges as well. So it will remove slight imperfections in skin. So uh, I took a full set and I put a one eighth on my second shooter's 20 to 105. Moving on to the next compartment. Like I said earlier, I have additional batteries and these are nice for my external battery charger. So I can go through and actually charge everything at once. <laughs> That's the shot right I know, yeah. What, three of Probably need like 15 minutes if I'm being honest. And next I have ND filters for my drone. The drone I took this time was the Mavic 3 Classic. This has been the one I've been flying lately. Um, I didn't actually get to fly it as much as I wanted to because we were taking a lot of photos in like urban areas and uh, a lot of no-fly zones right by the airport. So um, I got to use this a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, one thing I did pack that was a little extravagant this trip was the smart controller for my uh, drone. This is amazing because I don't need to have any cell surface to power this and uh, I do have my phone with the like $10 a day travel pass or whatever. But also, I don't want to screw around with putting my phone into the controller and then, uh, you know, then I get all these kind of notifications while I'm flying. So having the controller with the screen comes in clutch when you're trying to get up and flying quickly and at a wedding, every second counts. So this makes your life a whole lot easier. I know, yeah. <laughs> I said, like, we have helicopters and all, like people honking their horns and all kinds of stuff. And finally, we have full frame swabs and cleaning stuff because when you're swapping lenses and things are happening, you're definitely going to get all kinds of crap on your sensor when it is the worst possible timing for it to happen. So making sure you have the proper cleaning supplies so that you're not removing a speck from 800 photos in post-production will make your life much easier and it will save you a ton of editing time and money. And for microphones, like the mic I've been using here is the DJI mic. And even if I'm shooting photos at a wedding, I love to quickly just mic up the groom specifically so I can get some uh, audio of their vows and just things that are happening day to day so if they do want a video I can just use the audio from their vows and then just go through and make like a slideshow of images or uh, a lot of people these days since smartphones are so good everyone loves to shoot Instagram video of the bride and groom so then I can just compile all that under an audio track of their vows and they love it so just having a mic that you can quickly set up and these mics internally record to their own storage so you don't even have to set the receiver up to your camera you can just slap this on the groom press record and just let it record all day the internal memory is like 15 hours so unless you have the most gnarly wedding ever you're gonna be covered <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> you can't see it, but all of my friends are like having the time of their life on vacation and I'm like, oh, this is a great spot for a YouTube video. So um, 
I might have to wrap this up pretty quickly. The last compartment of my camera bag is uh, my cables and I have all kinds of USB-C, USB-A, whatever I need to charge my cameras day of is 100% what I have to have in the bottom of my bag. And like I said, as soon as I go through a battery, I immediately put it onto my external battery and start recharging it just in case the wedding goes two, three hours over. You wanna make sure you have enough camera battery power to get through the whole day. And finally for the bag itself, this is my trusty low pro 450 aw this was uh, what i sent with my second shooter it had all of the batteries and drone and filters and extra stuff that if i needed to quickly say like hey hand me a different filter they can come in here and take the filters out quickly but i don't need to be lugging all of this stuff around when i have my six liter sling bag uh, no <laughs> no the bag is not waterproof <laughs> And finally, I have my MacBook Air. This is what I will be backing everything up to as soon as I am done filming. Having everything backed up makes your life much easier when it comes to editing, especially because uh, you don't have to guess which memory card you use to shoot the wedding with. It's already on your computer. Like I said earlier, I backed everything up to Dropbox. So even if I lose everything here, like if my bag gets stolen while I'm traveling, I'll still have a copy of the full res version in the cloud on Dropbox. So that's an additional service that you have to buy, but it's like 12 bucks a month. And for the peace of mind, it is well worth it. So that is everything that I took in my minimal bag to film a destination wedding. This was about as lean as I could possibly go. Like I said earlier, it's nice whenever you're filming a wedding when you can have Pelican cases in your car and just have access to any camera gear you can ever imagine to make your life easier. But when it comes to packing one bag for two shooters and then you have to bring all of this stuff with you through airports and hotels and Airbnbs, traveling light and only bringing what you absolutely need is way more difficult than you might think. So what would you guys pack in your camera bag if you had to film a destination wedding? And if this audio was terrible, I apologize. It is super windy. I put the windscreen on, but this is pretty intense. And all of my friends are looking at me drinking beers in the pool. So I'm gonna go join them. <laughs> Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> what about a shout out? You gotta give a shout out at the end, man. You can say Big that. shout out to something. Shout out to my second shooters, Kyle and Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, if you watched another, yeah, Ryan, if you watched another video on my channel, he was my audio engineer for, what was it, Tyler's car? Yeah, Tyler. Yeah, for Tyler's Audi. So go watch that and, and uh, tell me how the audio sounds. Put the link in the description. Link in the description. <laughs> Good job, Kia. See ya. Hell yeah.